नमस्ते नमस्ते गौरी जी नमस्ते मैं मैंने यूट्यूब पर भी लिखा के वी आर लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड फॉर हियरिंग योर टॉक वेरी वार्म गुड इवनिंग टू एवरी वन ऑन दी ऑकेजन ऑफ इतिहास सप्ताह थ्री पॉइंट ओ री राइटिंग हर स्टोरी सेवन डेज इंटरनेशनल वेबिनार ऑन द क्रॉनिकल्स of uh, women uh, regarding indian subcontinent uh, regarding this webinar we are organizing our first technical session and uh, the resource person is dr gauri parimod krishnan ma'am former chief curator pradhan mantri sangrahalaya new delhi ma'am is going to talk on the title power of the female De- devanagan sculptures on indian temple architecture I warmly welcome you, ma'am, uh, to the webinar uh, on behalf of the president of the history enthusiast, honorary president, Dr. Nandan Shastri sir, all the executive committee members, and of course our advisory committee members. Uh, thank you so much for accepting our invitation, ma'am. I also invite uh, our honorary president, Dr. Nandan Shastri sir, uh, and I also welcome president. Miss um, uh, Manali Momaya of the History Enthusiast. Uh, now I request Miss Manali Momaya to introduce our today's resource person. Thank you so much, Nidhi, for the warm welcome. Uh, it's really an honor to uh, introduce our today's resource person, uh, Dr. Gauri Ji. Uh, Dr. Gauri uh, Gauri Parimukhrishnan has dedicated 30 years to the art. Uh, and uh, arts and heritage sector in singapore and india she has curated major international exhibitions of indian and asian art for the past 28 years she served the pradhan mantri sangrahalaya in new delhi as its chief curator and at present associated with the ministry of culture on curatorial projects dr krishnan is an art historian independent curator and museum consultant her major contribution as a founding senior curator and center director is the development of the indian heritage center and the south asia galleries of the asian civilizations museum from inception to fruition dr krishnan taught indian art history at the national university of singapore and museum studies and curatorship at the nanyang Technic, uh, technological university singapore dr krishnan is a recipient of the commendation medal and public administration uh, medal for her contribution to the arts and heritage sector in singapore Dr Krishnan's extensive publications and research interests uh, uh, spans interrelationship of the arts of India and Southeast Asia uh, temple architecture and sculpture and community heritage uh, this is a brief uh, introduction of our uh, resource person uh, i now request uh, professor gauri parimo krishnan to begin her lecture on the power of the female devangana sculptures on indian temple architecture Thanks for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank, you. thank you so much, Manali, for that kind introduction. And um, also, uh, I would like to thank the history enthusiasts, um, the entire executive council, and the honorary president, uh, Sri uh, Nandan Shastri ji, for uh, uh, inviting me and giving me this opportunity. And I really uh, thank. Um, also manali and uh, nidhi for their enthusiasm 
uh, I am very encouraged to actually be part of this um, uh, association and to be able to contribute uh, my interest and my research in um, the area of uh, women's uh, representation in our Indian uh, culture and uh, art history. So without further ado, let me start as the time is really uh, tight and I have a lot of slides to take you through. Um, the Power of the Female is actually the title of my book, um, which was uh, my PhD thesis, which was conducted in the 80s uh, for the MS University and submitted to the MS University of Baroda. So I um, uh, am actually a um, practicing dancer who went into art history. So I pursued two degrees together and this PhD was actually an outcome of my interest in dance as well as in art history and to locate the importance of feminine sculptures, not the mainstream goddesses, uh, but the uh, presence of um, uh, what we call ancillary or miscellaneous um, imagery of the uh, feminine on Indian temple architecture. So I really wanted to go into something that is non-mainstream and this research sort of evolved along the way. Next slide, please. Um, I just want to share a little bit of um, the autobiographical stuff and also to promote the book. It's published by the um, DK Print World um, Private Limited and uh, you can purchase it from the website or from Amazon. Uh, this book has a very, I mean, this research has a very interesting trajectory of its own. Uh, because uh, soon after publishing, uh, uh, submitting the thesis, I went to Singapore to become the curator of the Asian Civilizations Museum and it remained on the back burner as I had more pressing projects and I also became a mother. And uh, so this book didn't see the light of the day until 2013. And uh, this <clears throat> publication was uh, launched by the former ambassador, um, high commissioner to uh, um, Singapore from India. Uh, Srimati Vijay Thakur Singh on the occasion of Dance India Asia Pacific at the Asian Civilizations Museum. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so, um, when we talk about the Apsaras and the Devanganas or Madanikas and Surasundaris, we are dealing with a number of uh, terminologies here. Um, most of the um, auspicious feminine uh, symbolism, uh, they are uh, known to be um, aqueous uh, origin or uh, origin from waters, but they have a long, a long association all the way from Vedic literature, Puranic literature, Buddhist, Prakrit, Jain, and you see their presence in uh, monuments as well. So uh, we are dealing with literary sources as well as with sculpture and architecture. And as a dancer, I was also added another dimension to the study of the postures and the uh, symbolism uh, these feminine figures um, introduced on the temple surface. Or what was the role they played in the uh, auspicious programming of a structure like a religious monument uh, which could be either Hindu, Buddhist or Jain. And what is very interest, interesting and uh, important for us to understand is that this is the shared heritage. Through my research, I came to know all this thing. When I started, I had absolutely no clue. I started with Gujarat and then expanded my research to Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. So um, just quickly identifying, you can see in the middle of the temple wall, this is uh, Ambika Mata temple from um, uh, Ambika Mata temple Jagat, Rajasthan, about 8th, uh, 10th century. And this one, uh, you can see in the center, the main Devakoshta has the presence of uh, Durga Mahishasur Mardini. But the material that I am interested in and what is the scope of my research are the Apsaras and Devangras on the Ratha Pratirathas, on the two outer sides. And on the corner Devakoshtas are the two um, um, Dikpalas. So you can see that their placement is quite in the recess. They do normally don't get much mention in the research of most architectural scholars. Only people with interest in sculpture or symbolism or dance like myself would go and notice them. Uh, next slide. 
<clears throat> this is uh, uh, another site from uh, Rajasthan called Ocean. Ocean also has uh, the presence of Devaganas. You can see them uh, between the main Devakoshtas, the Bhadra Devakoshta and the Corner Devakoshtas. You, you, they, can, they can be seen on the two, um, uh, two subsidiary Ratha Pratirathas of the Nagara temple architecture. Next slide. <clears throat> You also find them in uh, the step wells of Gujarat and the most prominent example of that being the Rani Ki Vau. I have spent many um, hours and have visited this site many times during the 80s to study each and every iconography of the Apsaras. And you can see on each tier of the two side walls of the step well, they are next to the main Bhadra Devakoshta where you can see the presence of the uh, different um, imageries of Vishnu uh, and the various uh, gods, Hindu gods. So again, their presence is in the recesses. Next, please. Uh, I have also added two slides to show that even in the Vitana or the superstructure uh, or the ceiling of the Nagara temple architecture, they are placed. Uh, this is called a Vimana. Uh, so the example on the left is from Luna Vasahi in uh, Abu, Mount Abu, uh, and the other uh, reference is from Tus or um, perhaps from uh, Jagat, I, I'm not sure, uh, from the Rajasthan temples. So you see them also represented as mentioned as Vidyadharis. Uh, they are all standing on top of um, viala like structures they are like uh, elephant headed uh, motif and they are standing on them uh, whereas in the vitana of the uh, sorry vimana of the yeah vitana of the rajasthan uh, luna vasahi temple you see them in procession with musicians so dance Musicians participated in in the uh, processions uh, along with the kings and the royalty. Next slide, please. Uh, then we come to Mah uh, Madhya Pradesh. This is the famous Udayeshwar temple at Udaipur, <coughs> which also has some very prominent apsaras. Next slide. And of course, Khajuraho, the Chandela uh, temple site, where again you find them in the uh, Antarala. And between the uh, the Mukha Mandapa and the uh, uh, Garbagriha, they are also found on pillars. They are also found on the ceilings. So these this this gives you an idea of where these uh, images can be found, uh, and how important and closely knit they are as part of the temple's symbolic and iconographical fabric. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a quick uh, recap of uh, we, what I just showed you. The material is from Gujarat, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh between 8th and uh, 12th century. And the uh, dynastic periods um, related to this material or the temple building activity that was promoted the most during the reigns of the Pratiharas, the Chandelas, the Solankis, the Chahamanas. And uh, of course... All over India, the presence of uh, Apsaras and Devanganas in the uh, temple architecture is there. But as part of my research, I have focused on this area. Uh, Orissa as well as uh, you know other parts, even in eastern India and other parts of northern India. But for my presentation, I'm just focusing on these areas. Next slide, please. So going back to the... Uh, symbolism and where does it start so where do we see it i mean one can go all the way to indus valley and one can refer back to material all the way from the early uh, riverine civilizations but um my, for my research i had focused mainly on the um maurian shunga period and also i have gone into literary sources because from the vedic uh, period i mean even if we look at temple architecture as such, we do not have any examples of uh, buildings from the Vedic period. We only have uh, references to architecture from the Buddhist period uh, and not, nothing beyond the Mauryan period. So we need to refer to uh, literature as our basis for uh, research. And so um, my re references start from the Rig Vedas. 
and where we also find the presence of um, several Vedic goddesses which are referred in the Vedas and the Puranas as being auspicious, um, wound bestowing, fertility uh, enhancing and therefore their presence also in ritual and cultural ethos of the, in, uh, of the Indian traditions seems to be as old as the Vedas. Uh, so we have uh, references. Um, uh, can we see the next um, slide? Yeah, so <clears throat> in uh, since the time is very short, I'm trying to show you uh, in a very uh, um, abstract diagrammatic concept uh, what it means to understand the symbolism and the uh, meaning behind the uh, importance of Apsaras and Devanganas in the Indian context, where I also bring in the presence of temple rituals, because as we, we get references from epigraphy as well as from history, that uh, temples had uh, rituals performed by Dev Devadasis, and many of the Devadasis could also have been the source of inspiration for our uh, sculptors and sthapatis, uh, which um, may have formed the basis for the creation of the Apsaras and Devanganas. And uh, what is their role? Their role is auspicious. So at the core of this diagram, I have the concept of Nitya Stumangali, the ever auspicious, which is what all the Apsaras would have, some, or the Devanganas would have symbolized. Um, and uh, I have used color chart or color circle because I'm also from the art historical background. So I'm using that as a reference to plot the pro. Ma'am's video is stuck. It's frozen. Um, Ma'am. Uh, yes, actually, Madam had informed me that there are uh, there might be some problems with her. Uh, uh, internet she's back yes please bear with me uh yeah so going back to the point that i was making earlier auspicious symbolism uh, related to fertility uh, uh we also have um the same imagery along the you know the same monument or within the same monument we have apsaras also uh, associated with uh, asceticism as well as bravery or valor. So I classify this material into two groups, um, Shringara and Veera. Manali, I don't see the slides. Um. Huh. Okay. So very broadly speaking, as you can see, on one end, uh, you have the the sensuality, the, the Shringara, and on the other side, you have the Veera. And on the top, you have the reference to abundance, uh, symbolized by Putra Vallabha or Ashok Dohada. And below, um, as a Nati Nartaki, the dancer, the expressive aspect of the Divangana. So with this very simple background, I want you to now look at the visuals. So you will understand how I have classified all this material. Next slide, please. Yeah, going back to the very, very earliest representation that we have in our Indian art uh, is the ring stones, which were found from the third century BC. One example here from Murtaza Ganj, where you have the woman and tree. And the woman and tree has an auspicious symbolism, which can also be found in Egyptian art, uh, Mesopotamian art. And uh, next slide. And it's translate, it also translates into Shalabhanjika, the concept of Shalabhanjika. But what is Shalabhanjika? Where would the imagery of Shalabhanjika would have evolved? Um, many scholars from Vogel and Kumaraswamy onwards have written on this material. 
Uh, so for my research, it was um, something that I wanted to uh, search from our literary sources. So I went to uh, presence. Um, I went to study, say things like um, uh, dramas, poetry in Sanskrit and Prakrit. And Ashoka Dohada is one such um, uh, reference which comes from uh, Vidyashala Bhanjika. Uh, the the drama called Vidya Shala Banjika, in which uh, you have the Malavika, the the the, the heroine of the play, uh, engaging in the pro, in the ritual of Ashoka Dohata, which is basically to kick the Ashoka tree for it to bloom. So these were some of the uh, festivals or practices that were in the Indian culture, and that could have been the inspiration for some of these sculptures there are also uh, the fertility um, uh, bestowing or nourishment bestowing images of women holding food and these are pillars so you also find the importance of these um, symbolism uh, symbolism of the feminine supporting fertility and nourishment found on the temples pillars so architecturally also they had a very important role to play uh, and we can interpret them how in an auspicious, uh, and this is also found from architectural text, uh, where it says that um, no building is uh, complete without the presence or uh, representation of feminine symbols. And so they were not only um, uh, used as avarana devatas or decorative appendages, but they were also structurally very important. Pillar oh, is like the support for the structure, just like a woman is the support of any family or uh, institution uh, such as marriage. So there are many, many ramifications of, um, you know, a single um, uh, imagery, but we don't have much time to go into it. Uh, can we move to the next? Let's give Madam a minute. There, there is some issue with her internet. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's all right, ma'am. <clears throat> Can we have the slides? <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, these are some examples of early mother goddesses uh, from uh, the uh, from the uh, Eastern Indian region. So you have these two examples of Mauryan period and the Panchachura is yet another uh, important. So these two actually represent the fertility as well as the Veera aspects. So with fertility, you have the concept of fertility then evolves into the Lakshmi. Uh, concept and the, uh, the concept of Veera, the Panchachuda with uh, weapons in her hair, uh, hair, uh, you know, um, ornament evolves into the concept of um, Durga, for example. Next slide. <clears throat> uh, there's also the concept of Aditi Uttanapada, where you have the uh, present presence of uh, um, visual imagery of the you know, good crops and for the, the, the lineage to continue. And you can also see the presence of uh, Lakshmi sitting on a lotus 
uh, in the Sri Sukta itself, the verses of Sri Sukta itself. So here you can also see the correlation of literature and visual representation um, in art. Next, please. And the, and the woman or the fertility also symbolized by the presence of the pot itself. So, you know, in certain areas like uh, Gujarat, for example, the worship, the mother goddess worship is done um, uh, by worshipping the pot itself or Garba, the, the Navaratri that we celebrate in honor of the Durga uh, during uh, Vasant as well as uh, Sharad. This is actually symbol is there's a lamp inside a perforated pot which symbol symbolizes the mother goddess. Uh, next, please. So you have abstract representation as well as the feminine representation. Uh, I have also collated very quickly the references to Pura Apsaras in Puranas, uh, where they are born. So there are many, many uh, references to how they were born, uh, how they came about, uh, what is the origin of their uh, uh, presence in uh, Vedic and Puranic literature. Uh, so one uh, reference is uh, they were born from churning of the ocean, according to Bha Bhagavad Puran. Uh, in um, Vayu Puran, they are born from the mind of Brahma or from the wind. Uh, in other references, um, they are all, uh, other Puranas, they are also referred to as daughters of Rishi Kashyapa and his wife uh, Arishta. There are uh, as many. Ma'am, your video is frozen again. Yeah. Um, okay. Can we move to the next slide? Yeah. So here, uh, there's a very interesting uh, correlation I found between a literary reference from Vishnu Puran, where it is said that for every uh, month in the chariot of uh, Surya, which you can see in the center, the Deva, the Bhadra Deva Koshta has the presence of. Uh, 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 Surya riding on the seven horses and next to it, uh, next to the uh, Deva Koshna, there are Apsaras. So uh, this is a very interesting example where you actually see the presence of Apsaras next uh, next to Surya. And so they are told, uh, they, I mean, we are told that they occupy uh, the chariot of uh, Surya along with Rishis, Usha, Pratyusha um, and the Yakshas. So they are also therefore uh, the translation of a literary source from the Puranas can actually be seen on temple architecture, such as this example from Tusa in Rajasthan, from the Sun Temple itself. Next slide. Uh, in, uh, yeah, so Yakshis and Apsaras that I wanted to correlate, there is also a correlation between uh, the iconography of the Yakshis and the uh, Apsara. So I see in my research a, a continuation of this in visual representation. This is something that has not been uh, so uh, uh, researched and put uh, on, and argued in such details by any other scholar. <clears throat> Next, please. Now to quickly move to the yeah. So this is um, the the uh, the nourishment concept which we have. A reference to, I have coined it Swastana Sparsha. This is not a term that I have come across in any other scholar's work. Mm -hmm. the, the maximum info, uh, the, the maximum contribution to the study of Apsaras is done by V.S. Agrawal, but even he has not coined this term Swastana Sparsha that uh, alludes to the uh, Sri Lakshmi aspect of the uh, Apsara or Devangana. Here, of course, this is a Yakshi from Mathura. 
नेक्स्ट प्लीज रेफरेंस टू द सेम आइकोनोग्राफी फ्रॉम मध्य प्रदेश टेंथ सेंचुरी सो दिस इज हाउ आई एम ट्राइंग टू शो द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द आइकोनोग्राफी इन इंडियन आर्ट फ्रॉम ऑलमोस्ट टेंथ सेंचुरी अक्रॉस टेंथ सेंचुरीज नेक्स्ट लाइन एंड यू ऑल्सो सी दैम नेक्स्ट टू व्यालाज इन टेम्पल आर्किटेक्चर नेक्स्ट लाइन This is also from Ambika Mata Temple, where you see the Swastana Sparsha iconography, again represented on the temple walls next to the uh, Dwara, uh, next to the uh, Dik Palas. Next slide. Uh, then we come to the Shala Banjika. I reference I referenced the context of Shala Banjika earlier, and the, in the context of the Murtaza Ganj. and also connected it with um, egypt so this iconography therefore is not new but i think it comes uh, comes uh, or ha has been employed uh, in most aesthetically and most convincingly on buddhist architecture and i think sorry this is really very uh, disturbing to the flow of the lecture we understand ma'am there might be some technical uh, issues it happens yeah can we have the slides okay next next slide next slide yeah so uh, this is an example again of the shala banjika from a jain uh, jain uh, stupa uh, also of the same period as the mathura buddhist stupas uh, this is a uh, reference from the ayaga patta of a uh, jain stupa from kankali tila again you can see the torana in the middle and the shala banjikas on two sides next please and now you have the shala banjika transforming into nadi devatas on gupta period so i have taken you from second century to fifth century and i have shown you how there is a transformation in the iconography of shala banjika which evolves into nadi devata so now you can see uh, ganga and jamuna both uh, with the tree uh, around them and jamuna actually holding the branch of the tree in the shala banjika pose next please uh, there is another iconography which i would like to highlight the mother and child putra vallabha from sanghol uh, 2nd century as well as tus from 10th century again this is a continuation of the maternal or the fertility aspect and the nourishing aspect of the apsara iconography next please <clears throat> uh this is a mother and child from chhalra patan this is also a pillar sculpture next please um again putra vallabha from the surya temple uh, sorry ambika temple in jagat uh flanking the central devakoshtha of the dikpalas the you can see the woman holding the child and you can also see appreciate the beauty of the sculptures 
while we understand that Khajuraho sculptures have the best uh, sort of tribhangas and they are also shown from all sides, you also do appreciate that the sculptors of the uh, Maru Gurjara, what um, Madhusudan Dhaki has coined the term Maru Gurjara to refer to the um, style that evolves around the 10th century with the elements of uh, Gurjara and uh, Maru, that is Rajasthan and Gujarat. Uh, in the in the region of Gujarat, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. So you can see the woman just about to turn. So there's a dynamism that is also uh, visible in the pose that is being struck by the uh, two uh, Apsara figures, Devangana figures. Next, please. This is the third iconography I would like to introduce and that is the Keshan Istoya Karini where the Apsara or uh, here the Yakshi, this is uh, from uh, Sanghol, uh, Mathura 3rd century uh, Kushan period. Uh, she has wet hair and she is uh, just squeezing the water out of her wet hair which is being uh, kept, uh, caught in the beak of a uh, swan standing beside her. So this is a very beautiful imagery as well. Next please. Uh, yet another very dynamic representation of Keshan Istoikarani from Khajuraho 12th century Vishwanath temple uh, in the same action of uh, squeezing the hair after, after bath. Next please. And the same iconography as uh, the previous one from Rani Kiva. Here also you can see the woman is in a dynamic pose as if she's moving or uh, walking and the bird is seated on a little branch of a tree and you can also see the wet or uh, drapery of the garment of the devangana next please uh, yet another example uh, from the asian civilizations museums uh, collection uh, of a similar uh, keshan istoikarani uh, Nidhi, I would like to give five minutes to uh, questions. So maybe we can, uh, yeah, if you can show the slides quickly, then I can come to the conclusion because the internet is really not stable. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this is yet another uh, iconography of the Alasa, uh, which is a Naika uh, in the Shringarik context or Shringarik group. Next, please. I would like to end with the, the fears of the Veera Naika where she is also seen uh, holding weapons and for that the references come already from the Koshan art of the Yakshis holding a uh, kharag or a kind of a weapon and it is said that in literature, next please, in literary uh, references, uh, yeah sorry before going to that, uh, we have the Vasana Bransha uh, where uh, you have again a reference in literature to um, a scorpion climbing onto the lower garment of the of the naika and she's seen uh, removing the garment uh, in order to uh, you know discard the, the the scorpion from her dress so this iconography also continues all the way from second century um, uh, kushan art into the temple architecture of the uh, hindu temples next please this is a very good example uh, we have from the Asian Civilizations Museum collection. Uh, next, please. And also um, playing with a monkey. So uh, there are elements, I mean, there are uh, elements like parrot, monkey, they come in the context of royal, uh, you know, harem and royal scenes as well. And as part of the um, harity uh, that women would engage their pastime in, and they would also then. Uh, become the inspiration for the sculptors to uh, sculpt them on the temple uh, temple surfaces. Next, please. Uh, this is Markata Cheshta. Uh, this is a very famous uh, sculpture from the National Museum's collection, uh, where you can see the woman beautiful uh, egg. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah, and this is the last section here. Uh, this is a Khargadhari, as I was talking about. The references are from uh, uh, Buddhist literature and also from Sanskrit literature, where women who are wearing uh, matted hair and holding skull club, uh, who would also have been 
perhaps yoginis who were involved in uh, yogic practices uh, from the rani ki wow so i have categorized these as uh, not only shringarik but also veera the character of uh, uh, women as brave and also as ascetics next please and you can see many examples of this in our gujarat as well as in rajasthan so in conclusion uh, what i would like to highlight is uh, you can hear me right yeah uh, the role of um, women uh, as uh, uh, auspicious symbols on temple architecture and the worship of mainstream goddesses of other feminine characters or feminine principles that are associated with temple architecture and um, be it from a very early period and they have survived as shared heritage in the substratum of indian culture and continue to be because even today when we build temples um in the contemporary time the present times we have sthapatis who are aware of these and who are uh, continuing to um depict them or represent them on our temples and therefore this whole tradition of uh, auspicious feminine symbol in um indian culture which has been also codified in texts like samarangan sutradhar aparajita uh, prachcha um uh, and many other texts uh, across not just the north and western india but also in odisha and south of india uh, uh gives us a understanding or a perspective on uh, what role these auspicious feminine uh, representation played in indian culture and in art and aesthetics uh with these um quick uh sort of re- overview of the my my research i would like to end here and i can take one or two questions if there is time permitting sure ma'am there is time uh we have uh, two or three minutes and uh, i think we can take up uh, a couple of questions within that time uh so i request uh any of the members who have joined the meeting uh yes there's a question here from uh, nandan shastri ji which is the oldest hindu temple in singapore gauri ji is there feminine representation uh in that temple yeah, yeah. So, so in in in, in singapore, singapore the most most, most of the temples, temples are, are uh, south uh, indian style or the what we call the tamil style the dravidian style and the representation of apsaras and devangnas is not there in the south indian tradition so um uh, yeah we don't have uh, these kind of iconographic uh, details carved in hindu temples in uh, in singapore this is a nagara tradition thank you ma'am uh, there is another question here by uh, prerona roy Uh, what does a woman holding a ball in one of the sculptures symbolize a scriptures uh, i think she meant sculptures sculptures uh, what i what i like to um, speak about these iconographies is in the relation of everyday activities <clears throat> or everyday pastime uh, which women would engage in and uh, so what i like to say in the response to this question is that everything uh need not be symbolic of anything religious or philosophical uh it can also be taken as a activity of everyday engagement and women uh were also proficient in dance in music in acrobatics in uh, you know many other fields as we know that the 64 kalas were taught uh, in the ancient times so this could be just a reflection of that thank you ma'am i do have one question of my own uh, so we uh, you just showed us a chart a color beautiful color chart of all the various uh, uh, ways in which female sculptures have been uh, portrayed on temple architecture uh, particularly when we come to jain temple architecture uh, do all of those kinds of sculptures appear uh, like do we find all of those kinds or are there only particular kind of depictions yeah on jain temples we don't find uh, so much of erotic sculptures or like what, what i call the vasana brancha where
Ma'am, your video has frozen again. <coughs> yes, it's back. A lot of dancing figures, not so many uh, erotic figures. <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. There is uh, uh, Dr. Kushal yeah. Singh has raised his hand. Uh, yes. Please unmute yourself, please. Yes, hello. Good evening, ma'am. Ma'am, my question is, after watching all this, ma'am, this is what you have kept in all your history, you have kept in all your Prachin Sabhyatao, you have called here. Ma'am, which time did you get in the past, which time did you get in the past? You will tell us that you have to end all your history, or we can say that you have to end all your things, where did you get in the past, and how did you get in the past, and how did you get in the past, and how did you get in the past? मेरे को थोड़ा उस हिस्ट्री के बारे में थोड़ा उस कालखंड के बारे में आप बताएंगे तो थोड़ा सा प्लीज थोड़ा सा मैं इसके ऊपर अगर हाँ ये बहुत बड़ा सवाल है इसका एक ने दो पांच मिनट में नहीं जवाब दिया जा सकता है लेकिन मैं जिस पीरियड को स्टडी कर रही हूँ आठ से बारह सेंचुरी एट सेंचुरी टू ट्वेल्थ सेंचुरी उसके दौरान जो मोस्ट ऑफ द पेट्रंस थे वो राजा थे या रानियां भी थीं जैसे वेरी फेमस द स्टेपवेल ऑफ रानी की वाव ये रानी उदयमती ने बनाया था सो मेल पेट्रंस भी थे फीमेल पेट्रंस भी थे और कहीं कहीं तो विलेज और ट्रेड कम्युनिटी भी पेट्रनेज देती थी इस टाइप के मंदिर वगैरह बनाने के लिए और मठ मठाधीश मठाधिपति भी ऐसे मंदिर बनाते थे तो हमारा जो कल्चर है और इसमें अभी भी वो पीरियड नहीं आया है जब हमारे यहाँ उतना बाहर का आक्रमण होता था और मंदिरों को तोड़ा जाता था हाउएवर मैं ये जरूर कहूंगी कि कई मंदिरों में और स्पेशली जैन मंदिरों में क्योंकि वहां पे काफी समृद्धि भी थी हिंदू मंदिरों में भी एक्चुअली समृद्धि बहुत थी स्पेशली गुजरात और राजस्थान में वी स्टार्ट सीइंग लेस डेकोरेशन आउटसाइड एंड मोर डेकोरेशन इनसाइड सो जैसे आप माउंट आबू और कुंभारिया ये दो मंदिरों का कंपैरिजन करें तो माउंट आबू के मंदिरों में बाहर डेकोरेशन है वेर एज इन कुंभारिया which is uh, on the Gujarat side, decoration is inside the temple. So, I think that it is possible that when it comes to the Akraman, the people who were in the Akraman decided that they don't focus on the embellishment outside and focus on the inside. And many of the Jain temples are made of marble. So, they are very explicitly carved, like a gemstone only. They, everything from inside is carved beautifully, but the exterior is left bare. सो so, ये एक क्विक um, रेफरेंस मेरे ध्यान में आया जो मैं आपको आपके साथ शेयर करती हूँ uh, लेकिन मेरे मेरी समझ में ये है कि क्योंकि मैंने स्थापति लोगों को भी देखा है और मैंने टेक्स्ट भी पढ़ा है uh, तो मुझे ये समझ में आता है कि अभी भी ये ट्रेडिशन मरी नहीं है खत्म नहीं हुई है और जो अप्सरा देवांगना का रिप्रेजेंटेशन है ये अभी भी चल रहा है जैसे आप देखें स्वामी नारायण मंदिर जो बन रहे हैं भारत के बाहर इंडियन डायस्पोरा इज बिल्डिंग सो मेनी टेंपल्स वहां पर भी अगर आप देश में तो बिल्डिंग का जो एक्टिविटी अभी भी जो हो रही है उसमें आप जरूर देखेंगे द प्रेजेंस ऑफ अप्सरा देवांगना तो ये ट्रेडिशन अभी भी चालू है। थैंक यू मैम, थैंक यू सो मच। मैम, आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन। यू एक्सप्लेन्ड अबाउट फर्टिलिटी देवांगना। सो इन नॉर्थ एस यू कॉल्ड इट एस फर्टिलिटी देवांगना, द सेम कैन बी सीन इन साउथ इन द फॉर्म ऑफ लज्जा गौरी। आर दे बोथ सेम और डिफरेंट? नो नो, दे आर द सेम। दे आर � Inspiration is similar. The the background or the inspiration is similar, but its representation varies from region to region. So you have uh, you know the Kamakya in Odisha, and you have Lajjagori in uh, in uh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, and you have uh, you know Durga in other parts of uh, North and Western India, uh, and you have Lakshmi. For example, Baharut which is a Buddhist monument. There's a present representation of Lakshmi seated on lotus with uh, the two uh, elephants. 
so gajalakshmi is already present in uh, buddhist architecture as early as the second third century bc so it is there in our indian ethos in every region it is represented differently and the rituals and the belief uh, or worship methods may be different but i see this all as a continuous and what i call shared heritage thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you so much ma'am uh, i think uh, we can uh, end the q and a here uh, as we are getting ready for the next session so um, i would uh, take this opportunity and uh, propose a vote of thanks uh, i uh, thank from the bottom of my heart uh, dr gauri parimukrishnan for uh, taking out time from her uh, busy schedule and spending so much uh, knowledge with us today uh, for uh, giving us so many uh, new perspectives to the indian architecture uh, thank you so much ma'am uh, it was a really wonderful interesting lecture for us and uh, i'm sure all of our participants have benefited from it uh, on behalf of myself my team uh, i express my gratitude to you uh, i also thank all of the uh, participants who have joined us in this meeting today here and uh, last but not the least i thank uh, uh, ms nidhi katti who moderated this session very well uh, thank you one and all the next session that is paper presentation session uh, the chairperson of that session will be uh, dr vinay kumar sir uh, and the session will begin at 6:15 so uh, we will have approximately 5 to 7 minutes of break in between uh, i request all the participants to join back in not only those who are presenting their papers in this session uh, we can have a nice question and answer session in that uh, paper presentation session as well so thank you all uh, we will sign off here thank, thank you. you thank you very much nidhi and banali thank you thank you ma'am Recording stopped.